So just to recap, we have the sales budget. All these budgets, by the way, are ones that we're going to come back to and we're going to pull numbers from these budgets. So we're going to be bouncing back from the cash budget to these budgets in order to compile the cash budget. So we started off in part one, we had the sales budget. Then we had the production budget. And then we went to the raw materials budget, the direct labor budget. And then we had the factory overhead budget, step five, the selling expense budget, step six, and the general administrative step seven. We're going to be using these numbers for the cash budget. All right, so we're going to take a look at some quick cash calculations before we get into the actual cash budget. We're going to look at the total cash receipts from customers, and we're going to be using the sales budget part one of our budgets in order to see what that number would be. All right, so we have the total budgeted sales. We said we're just pulling these numbers over. Was uh, the 494-400 for July? Was the 470-400 for August? And it was the 482-400 for September. And then what we need to do is figure out how much of those sales are on account. How much of it was for cash versus the sales that we're going to receive AR for. In a book problem, they would have to tell you in some way. In this way, we're going to give some kind of percentage to have the cash sales portion. In real life, we would, of course, have to make some kind of estimate how much of the sales will be in cash, how much will be on account. It will vary greatly depending on the type of industry and company that we are in. So, but the key here is that we'll have a, ta a timing difference, of course, and we need to figure out when the cash is being received, and that's what we are doing here. So we're going to say that the cash sales are, are 148.320, which is, of course, the 494.400 times 30%. We have the 141.120 and the 144.720. So these are going to be the cash that's received for the sales made in July. So that's what we have at this point. Sales on credit then would be the 494-400 minus the 148-320 or of course this number times 70% uh, because if this was 30 uh, then this would be times 70 and that would be the difference. So we have this number here and this number here. These are going to be the sales on credit. The assumption that we're going to make is that the sales on credit are going to be collected in the following month. So if we made it on credit in July, we're going to collect the money in August. Again, that's an assumption we're making in this problem. Uh, the problem will have to give you an assumption. In real life, we'd have to know what the assumptions are. The assumptions can be very simplified or they can be very complex. We could assume that we're going to get paid in multiple months uh, pr after the sales date. But in this case, we're going to assume that any sales made in one month is going to be collected in the following month. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the total cash receipts from customers using what we just calculated the cash budget uh, piece up here. This isn't the total cash budget, but it's part of our calculation we just looked at. So we got the current month's sales. That's what we're bringing down. Here's the current month's sales on cash. That's the cash sales 